Welcome back. We are learning different ways to ensure trustworthiness in qualitative research. In our previous videos, we talked about maximum variation, we talked about respondent validation. In this video, I'm going to talk about another method which is widely used in qualitative research to ensure trustworthiness. And we call this method as triangulation. The word triangulation, um, it's not from, originally from uh, qualitative research. Um, basically, it's from navigation sciences where people try to predict uh, exact location of a point based on two separate points. They measure the angle and then they predict the exact location, distance of the point. In the context of qualitative research, triangulation refers to sort of using different perspective to understand a phenomenon. So rather than try to measure something or try to look at a phenomenon and understand it from one lens or from one perspective, you choose multiple perspective to understand the exact nature uh, or experience of a of, of phenomenon that you are investigating. And that's what we call it triangulation. Triangulation, uh, how we implement it in, in research, based on that we can divide this in two categories. One is we call it data triangulation. What is data triangulation? In data triangulation, a qualitative researcher uses multiple sources of data to analyze a phenomenon. So rather than using one source of data, you try to collect data from multiple sources. So let's say if I'm doing interviews to understand a phenomenon, so interview data is one type of data, right? Now, I could also do some, collect some data, which is, let's say, some document analysis. So I can collect some document related to the phenomenon I'm investigating, and I can use another data related to the same phenomenon. Or I can do some, let's say, observational data where I'm not interviewing, I'm just observing my participants in their natural setting. So you see, to understand a phenomenon, I'm using three types of data. And then I analyze these three data and try to triangulate to get a clearer picture of the phenomenon that I am investigating. And we call it data triangulation. Let's understand it with an example. Let's say I'm trying to understand I'm exploring international student experiences in higher education in United States. So let's say I decided to interview students, international students who are enrolled in various programs in US universities. And this interview data is one source of data. I can also collect data from, let's say, um, deans of student office, dean of students office. I can ask dean of students like, hey, uh, I'm doing this research, if you could provide me some data related to overall academic performance, not individual data, but overall academic performance of international students. So I can collect some documented data. I can also reach out to international student office. Every university uh, has an international student office where student, um, you know, related to paperwork, visa related things, or, or if they have any trouble or challenges, 
generally international student this is their first sort of a support system they go there and international student office have uh, people there who are very uh, supportive they help you navigate uh, if you are having any sort of logistical challenges um, or uh, any document related things that needed to be done so you go to this office so international student office is another source of data could be another source of data to tell what might be some possible challenges that international student face when they come to us as students so what is happening here for my research i'm collecting data from different sources obviously one primary source is interview data where I'm interviewing the students, international students. Secondary, um, I'm also collecting another data from another source, which is Dean of Student Office. And then I'm also collecting data from International Student Office. So these three data from these three sources I can use, I can analyze the data and then triangulate them to really see the actual authentic experience of international student in a more comprehensive manner. So this is what we call it data triangulation. So in summary, data triangulation is an approach of collecting data from multiple sources to have a comprehensive understanding of the phenomenon that a qualitative research researcher is trying to understand. So that's briefly about uh, data triangulation. Now there is another type of triangulation which is also widely used in qualitative research and we call this method as theoretical triangulation. So let's understand what a theoretical triangulation looks like and what it is exactly in qualitative research. Theoretical triangulation. So in theoretical triangulation, a qualitative researcher uses a theory to understand the data with, with sort of having another lens which comes from a theory, uh, uh, existing theory, to understand and analyze the data more comprehensively uh, and more uh, like having a deeper understanding of the data with the help of uh, a theory which is related to uh, the phenomenon that I am investigating. So let's take the same example, international student uh, experiences in US universities. So in the previous example, we see, we see how to do data triangulation, so collecting data from multiple sources. For a theoretical triangulation, what I can do is, when, I'm, when I have collected the data, I can use, uh, to analyze this data, obviously I'm doing open coding and sort of uh, try to understand uh, students' experiences. I can also use a theory related to this phenomenon to understand it from a different perspective. So let's say there is a theory, uh, uh, this theory is called salad ball theory. What is salad ball theory? This theory is when people from one culture migrate to another culture, how they integrate themselves in that new culture. And according to salad ball theory, people, when they migrate to another culture, while they try to adapt and integrate themselves in that society, in that culture, try to adopt those means of, you know, the way of being and all those things, but at the same time, they also maintain their unique uh, their unique perspective, their unique practices that they bring from their own culture. It's just like a salad ball. So what do you see in a ball, in a salad ball, that you have this combination of all these vegetables. So they come together 
and when you eat it you have a you know distinct taste but at the same time you can identify these separate ingredients in that salad so that's what this theory is which is when people migrate from one culture to another culture they try to adapt integrate the practices from that culture but they do not lose their the culture where they come from those like the unique practices they have so they they, they try to adopt it rather than completely forget it or or completely forsake it so that's briefly what salad ball theory is so I can use this theory and I'm, I'm not saying this is the only theory but for example I can use salad ball theory to understand how international student when they migrate to US how they integrate themselves in the society here what are the practices they sort of adopt what are the practices they bring in from their own culture and how they change it and integrate it like a, a salad ball and this this theory can help me understand my data my interview data or other sources of data that I collected in in a different perspective from a different lens and that will add my understanding of my data and this is called theoretical triangulation so in summary data triangulation is about collecting data from multiple sources and a theoretical triangulation is using one theory sometimes researchers use two theories or maybe like three theories so there is no limit to how many theories you can use in a study but generally I have seen one two three theories that uh, uh, researcher use as a theoretical framework not only to inform their data collection their interview protocol but also during the data analysis and making meaning and sense of the data they have collected. So that's briefly about triangulation. It's widely practiced in qualitative research to ensure high level of trustworthiness. I'll see you again in another video talking about another way of ensuring high level of trustworthiness in qualitative research. Have a good day. See you.